ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم عبد الله ورسوله ارسله ربه بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الا وان كل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار i bear witness that there is none worthy of our worship except allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i bear witness that muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is the seal of the prophets and the final messenger to all of humanity Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, there is none to misguide. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves to stray, there is none to guide aright. Amma ba'ad, qabla an nabda inshallah, if you can move up a little bit because uh, some people are waiting outside. Barakallahu feek. If you find a spot in front of you, move up. Jazakallah khair. Fa nabda'u bihamdillah fa naqoolu alhamdulillahi alladhi ballaghana ramadhan. We start by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the opportunity to fast in this month of Ramadan. You are the chosen ones, you are the lucky ones. Because there are billions out there who are not Muslim who don't taste the sweetness of the month of Ramadan. There are a lot of people, maybe hundreds of thousands, who died before the month of Ramadan. Like Muhammad Ali, rahimahullah, the boxer. He died of only a few days before Ramadan. He didn't get the opportunity to fast in this month like you. There are people who are very old, there are people who are very sick, who cannot fast in this Ramadan, and there are Muslims, for whatever reason, they are not able to fast in this month. So if you are fasting today, say Alhamdulillah that He has given you the opportunity to fast. And those who cannot fast because they are pregnant, or because they are sick, or they are very old, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shower them with His Rahmah and will give them the reward for their intention, inshallah. I'm going to start with this bishara min al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nabda bi bishara min al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hadith fi al Bayhaqi. Hadith Sahih. Yaqul Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, "Uqtiyat ummati khamsan fi Ramadan, lam yuqahun Nabi qabli." So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in this beautiful hadith in al Bayhaqi, it's an authentic hadith that my ummah has been gifted with five things in this month of Ramadan, and no prophet before me was given these five. أما الأولى فإنه إذا كان أول يوم وليلة في رمضان نظر الله إليهم ومن نظر الله إليه فلا يعذبه أبدا. When it is the first day and the first night of the month of Ramadan, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will look at those who are fasting, and whoever Allah Subhanahu wa Taala looks at, He will never punish you. وأما الثانية فإن خلوف أفواههم حين يمسون أطيب عند الله من ريح المسك. The second quality or the second gift from Allah in this month, when you are fasting in the month of Ramadan, the smell of your mouth when you are fasting is better in the sight of Allah than the smell of musk. The third quality, the third gift, the malaika will be making dua for you day and night through the month of Ramadan that Allah will forgive you. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى يَأْمُرُ جَنَّتَهُ فَيَقُولِ اسْتَعِدِّي وَتَزَيَّنِي يُوشِفُ عِبَادِي أَنْ يَسْتَرِيحُ مِنْ تَعْبِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَى دَارِي وَكَرَامَتِي So the fourth gift, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask Jannah, get ready, get prepared, because my servant, they're about to leave this dunya with all the pain and the suffering, and they move to my mercy and my rahmah in akhirah. وَأَمَّا الْخَامِسَةُ فَإِنَّهُ إِذَا كَانَ آخِرُ لَيْلَةٍ فِي رَمَضَانٍ غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ جَمِيعًا Alhamdulillah. So the fifth quality, on the last day of the month of Ramadan, the last night of the month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all of them. So this is a good bishara from the Prophet sallallahu We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who get these five qualities in this month. On the other hand, of course, in the last few khutbahs, I spoke about how to maximize your hasanat in this month and how to fast properly in the best way to get the best out of the month of Ramadan. But today, inshallah, I'm going to do the opposite. And the opposite is how to lose the month of Ramadan like a pro. You get out of the month, you get nothing from the month of Ramadan. So I'm going to give you the opposite. So you be aware of the mistakes that people do in the month of Ramadan and lose their hasanat. 
There is this hadith from the Prophet ﷺ في الأدب المفرد للبخاري يقول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أو الراوي عبد الله بن مسعود يقول صعد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أو ارتقى المنبر في رواية فقال أمين ثم ارتقى مرة ثانية فقال أمين ثم ارتقى ثالثة فقال أمين فقال الصحابة الصحابة يا رسول الله على ما أمنت فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لما ارتقيت في المرة الأولى أتاني جبريل فقال ما رغم أنفه أو هو خاسر أو خائب من ذكرت عنده فلم يصلي عليك عليه الصلاة والسلام وأما الثانية في المرة الثانية قال جبريل رغم أنفه يعني هو خاسر من أدرك والديه أو أحدهما فلم يدخله الجنة هو خائب وخاسر فقلت آمين وأما في الثالثة فقال رغم أنفه من أدرك رمضان فلم يغفر له فقلت آمين. so in this authentic hadith in the adab al mufrad al bukhari the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم climbed the member one step he said آمين the second one he said آمين the third one he said آمين and after the khutbah the sahaba said يا رسول الله why did you say آمين three times so the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said on the first time جبريل عليه السلام came to me and said if your name is mentioned Ya Muhammad, and someone doesn't say, Allahumma salli alayhi, oh Allah, shower your mercy and rahmah on the Prophet sallallahu Whoever doesn't say that, he or she is a loser. So I said, Ameen. Say alayhi salatu wa salam. Peace be upon him. On the second time, Jibreel alayhi salam said, if someone's parents or one of them is alive and the parents don't take you to Jannah, then this person is a loser. I said, Ameen. So make sure that you are good and kind and uh, gracious to your parents so they will be your bridge to Jannah. And on the third one, Jibreel alayhi salam, if someone witnesses the month of Ramadan, the month of Ramadan is here and they don't get their sins forgiven in the month of Ramadan, they are losers, I said, Amin. So how can people lose their hasanat in the month of Ramadan? This is the focus of the khutbah, inshallah. To clarify what we mean by losing in the month of Ramadan, we have to look at the main goal of the month, the objective of the month of Ramadan, by just looking at Surah Baqarah. Because Surah Baqarah, when you open the Quran, Surah Fatiha, Surah Baqarah, it talks about the different acts of worship. It talks about fasting, it talks about zakah, it talks about salah, it talks about hajj, all of them are there. And the main point of the surah is to teach us taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa basically means to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To know that Allah is watching you. And you do things purely for the sake of Allah. Now if you look at the ayat of the Quran, every single ayah that talks about an act of worship, the five pillars of Islam in surah Baqarah, it always concludes with the word taqwa. So you will gain or achieve taqwa. For example, the second page. يا أيها الناس عبدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم والذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون. O humanity, worship your Lord who created you and those before you, so that you will achieve taqwa. So this is ibadah in general. If you look at the first page, the first page, who who are the people of the taqwa? الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون. The people of taqwa are those who fast, those who pray, those who give sadaqa, they believe in the unseen, and so on and so forth. The ayat that talk about hajj, they they end with the word so that you will achieve taqwa. ليس البر أن تولوا جوهكم it ends with the word لعلكم تتقون so that you will achieve taqwa. The ayat that talk about Ramadan and fasting. يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون. Oh, you who believe, fasting has been made فرض and obligation on you, just like it was made فرض on those before you, so that you will achieve taqwa. So this is the whole purpose of ibadah, is to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. So the best way to fast with this concept of taqwa, yes, we don't eat or drink or have intimate relations during the day of Ramadan, but also the concept of taqwa means that your tongue fasts so you don't say what is haram in Ramadan. Your eyes fast so you don't see or look at what is haram in Ramadan. 
Your ears fast so you don't listen to what is haram, like backbiting and so on and so forth. Your hands and legs fast so they don't walk or do what is haram in the month of Ramadan. And your heart fasts so everything you do is purely for the sake of Allah, with ikhlas. You don't make riya or showing off. You go for taraweeh so people say, oh, well, mashallah, he's kabir al-hujjaj. Or someone is standing in salah and they're taking selfie in salah while they're crying. No, you do it purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the concept of taqwa in this month. So if you would like to lose your hasanat and get out of the month with nothing, you lose the month of Ramadan like a pro, do the following things. Number one, I want you to fast the whole day, 17, 18 hours, and don't pray. Like a lot of Muslims, mashallah, they fast the whole day, but they don't have five minutes to pray. So they earn hasanat the hard way, 17, 18 hours of fasting, and they lose hasanat the easy way, five minutes of salah, right? There are a lot of Muslims like this. So again, they gain the reward for fasting, but they are going to lose everything for not fasting. And the Prophet Sallallahu calls them muflisun in the hadith in Sahih Muslim. They will gain hasanat, but they will lose it because they do something wrong. So do this. Number two, if you want to lose your hasanat like a pro, يعني كن قاطع للرحم. Cut off your family relations. Don't talk to your parents. Don't talk to your brothers and sisters because of disagreement on inheritance. Don't talk to your uh, uncles and aunts and so on and so forth. في مسند الإمام أحمد يقول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إنه ترفع الأعمال إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى إلا قاطع الرحم. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says everyone's good deeds would be presented to Allah by the end of the month. The fasting. The taraweeh, qiyam, the zakah, the sadaqah, everything would be presented to Allah except for the person who is cutting off his family relations, the people we spoke about. So imagine you are doing all of this, you are coming to the masjid all the time, fasting all day long, standing the whole night in salah, and at the end of the month, your hasanat will not, or good deeds will not be presented to Allah. Just a waste. I want you to stand the whole night watching videos and playing video games and uh, playing cards, shadda and all these things, and sleep the whole day, as some people do. So they basically turn This is what an owl does. You know the bird, it wakes up all night, sleeps all day. They do what I call hibernation. Hibernation is to, uh, to save energy. You sleep for a very long time. So you eat a big meal and you sleep for a very long time. Hibernation. So there is a huge difference between fasting and hibernation. Also, those of you, I know that some of you uh, smoke. I'm, I'm not going to get into the ruling. It's a big discussion, controversial issue. But some of those who smoke, I know they don't get to smoke for 17 hours, so they are going nuts. So they don't smoke during the day, you see steam coming out of their head. They're ready to explode. They're ready to snap on anyone, right? So if someone says, okay, can you pass me whatever the book, ah, oh, they go crazy. Someone says, salam alaikum, ah, oh, they go crazy, okay? So if this is what you do in the month of Ramadan, then relax a little bit. So you don't, want to, you, you don't lose your hasanat in this month. And even in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, even if you are you know, stressed out because of smoking or something else, the Prophet ﷺ says if someone is pushing your button, someone is, you know, is getting on your nerves, say I'm fasting twice, I'm fasting to remind yourself. But we do it as a warning, like I'm fasting, I'm fasting, you know, get away, get, get off my face so I don't punch you in the face or break your neck, right? So relax, relax so you don't lose your hasanat. If you don't want, if you want to lose your hasanat, uh, my advice to you, bring your kids every night to the masjid, throw them here in the masjid so they break loose and go do shopping, go to the movies, leave them here to ruin the imam's life, tear the carpet, right? And, and, and uh, play with the, uh, you know, whatever in the masjid, right? And enjoy your life, but make everyone else miserable. I want you, when you come to the masjid, park your car where you block, not one car, block two cars, so they can't leave, right? And the people stay outside crying because they need to go home, they have work in the morning. So these are the easiest ways to lose your hasanat. The second way, uh, 
or the second objective of the month of Ramadan that we get from uh, reading the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu the whole purpose of Ramadan is unity among Muslims. So for example, if you look for example at uh, Hajj, you can't just make Hajj in Vancouver by yourself or any time of the year. No, it has to be at a certain time, at a certain place, so everyone would be together. Three, four million people or more get together every year for the Hajj. Because it's about unity. When you pray, do you get more rewards, hasanat, for praying by yourself, fund, or by praying in jama'ah? Of course, when you pray in jama'ah, you get 27 rewards, more or less. But if you pray by yourself, you get just one. If you give zakat, you give it to yourself or get it to someone else. Half of the society who are rich, they give to the second half who are poor, so it's about unity. The same is true for the month of Ramadan. You can't fast any time you want. It has to be on the month of Ramadan. If you heard about the Nation of Islam, Malcolm X and Elijah Muhammad, they used to fast in December. Just, you know, because it's, the days are the shortest and, and the, the, the weather is nice. No, we can't do this. It has to be on the month, in the month of Ramadan. Because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written in the Quran. فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَةِ فَنْيَصُمْ so it's all about unity, bringing people together, spreading love among ourselves in this month. But subhanAllah, it seems like we take every opportunity to disunite the community and create fitna and fights in this month. I'll give you a few examples. So for example, we always have this big fight before the month of Ramadan. Are we going to do calculation or the moon or Mecca? It's always like this, big fights even before the month, before the month even started. Okay, khalas, we decided to follow one of them. The first night of Taraweeh, big fight. Are we going to pray 8 and Witr or 22 and Witr? Big fights, right, in the month. And, and, and so again, okay, we're going to do the 8 or the 22, whichever, it's all acceptable. Both are acceptable. Those who do 8 will go to Jannah. Those who do 22, they will go to Jannah. It's an excellent thing, alhamdulillah. Then another fight. Are we going to make Khatm Ramadan? Or we are just going to recite Quran Allah, had go home, alhamdulillah. Big fights. And at the end of the month, another big fight. Is Eid tomorrow or no? Based on calculation, based on moon sighting, another big fight. I remember a few years back, there was a friend of mine who is an imam in Dallas, Texas. So he said, uh, the first day of Ramadan, uh, there was a big fight in the masjid. The eight Raqqa brothers and the 22 Raqqa brothers. So they had a big fight in the masjid. We're going to do eight. No, we're going to do 22. Big fight in the masjid. So they started hit, hitting each other, right? In the masjid, chairs, baseball clubs, weapons of mass destruction. You know how Muslims fight, you know? So after half an hour, people were screaming and the sisters were screaming in the back and the kids were crying and people were falling in the, uh, in the masjid and someone was bleeding and big problem. Mushkila kabira, right? Big problem. So someone, alhamdulillah, decided to put an end to the fight. So what did he do? He called 911. So the police came in, three officers came in, and they didn't know the adab of the masjid. They walked inside the masjid with their shoes on. Now the eight Raqqa Muslims and the 22 Raqqa Muslims both started to fight with the police. You have no respect for the masjid, haram. You can't walk with your shoes on. Man. What's wrong with you? Right? You can't walk with your shoes in the masjid. You have no other for the masjid. Okay. But fighting in the masjid and crying and bleeding in the masjid is okay. But walking with your shoes on is haram. Right? So this is the kind of things that don't make sense in this month. Ramadan is the month of unity. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the knowledge and the sabr and the hikmah in this month. Sallallahu alayhi wa الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله ربه رحمة للعالمين. So we're going back now. How to fast the proper way? We said that Ramadan is about taqwa. It's about unity among Muslims. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم basically did three things in the month of Ramadan. There are three types of ibadah that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and the Sahaba did in this month. And if you would like to fast and gain your hasanat like a pro. Not like the people we mentioned in the first khutbah, then you have to do these three things. Try your best. So the first one, 
يعني عبادات النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كانت ثلاثة أنواع في العبادات الجسدية زي الصيام والصلاة والاعتكاف والنوع الثاني هي العبادات اللسانية زي الذكر وقراءة القرآن والنوع الثالث العبادات المالية كالصدقة والزكاة وكان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كما في الصحاء كان أجود الناس بالخير وكان أجود ما يكون في رمضان So the three types of ibadah that the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba did, number one, the physical ibadah, like salah, this is physical, fasting is physical, i'tikaf in the masjid is physical. Number two, the verbal ibadah, which you do mostly with your tongue, like the recitation of the Qur'an, remembering Allah subhanAllah, walhamdulillah, this is something you do with your tongue. And the third type is the financial ibadah, like giving your sadaqah or zakah in this month, and feeding those who are fasting in this month. And I take this opportunity to remind you that we have iftar in the masjid every night and we need sponsorships for iftar, inshallah, to get the reward for feeding those who are fasting. So you can talk to Brother Abdul Salam at the end, inshallah. And the Prophet Sallallahu based on what we know from the authentic hadith, he was the most generous of all people. And the Prophet Sallallahu was exceptionally generous in the month of Ramadan. So, with that in mind, I'm going to uh, present this opportunity, inshallah. Everyone knows that we have a loan on this masjid, which is long overdue. We are paying riba on it. So uh, we need to get out of this loan and pay it off, inshallah, by the end of this year. So the opportunity is, inshallah, so to pay off the loan and to fix the roof, which is in a bad condition. We need to fix it so there's no leaking all the time in different places. So the opportunity is we are going to give you the opportunity of Sadaqah Jariyah in this month. There are 500 Salah spots in the Masjid. If you would like to sponsor or buy a spot, inshallah you get the opportunity. The spot is $1,000, so we get off the loan inshallah and fix the roof. Some uh, spots are already taken. So inshallah think about this when you go home. Talk to your wife. I don't want to get you in trouble. Talk to your wife. And uh, we have this uh, Sadaqah Jariyah opportunity. One Salah spot in the Masjid for $1,000. And inshallah we'll get a tax receipt for it. So every time someone comes to the masjid to pray, you will get the reward. Every time a kid learns how to pray in the masjid, you will get the reward. Someone takes shahada in the masjid, you will get the reward. So think about it, inshallah, and get ready for next Jummah, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the reward for our sadaqah and our zakah in this month. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the reward for our fasting and our ibadah in this month. And as I mentioned before, you can give your zakah towards helping the masjid and helping with the fundraiser. Because in our countries back home, the majority of the scholars said, yes, fi sabilillah, one of the categories in Surah Tawbah about zakah is to for jihad, for example. But here, we are not supported by the government. Back home, the masajid are supported by the government, or awqaf. Here, the only help we get is from you. And what is better jihad in the sake of Allah than supporting the masjid and the school and to prepare the Muslim community for the future and protecting our children. This is the best jihad we can do in this country. Nasallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala na taqabbal minna salatana. Allahumma taqabbal minna salatana. Wa siyamana wa sa'ir a'malina. Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana ajma'in. Bi rahmatika arhamar rahimin. Wa salli allahumma ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa aghfir lana salatana.